Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome everybody to Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott of Pattaya, CEO and founder of JSA. Along with me, my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Castell. Hey, Evan. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Um, how's life post-vaccination? You know, I'm starting to feel more brave. I'm starting to venture out slowly but surely. So it's, feel, it's feeling good. But look at you, all, uh, all beach, beach attire with the, the palm trees blowing in the wind in the background. Where are you logging in from? Yeah, I'm just sitting in my basement. No, but in all seriousness, I'm, uh, I've taken my first uh, vacation, uh, sort of getaway uh, post-vaccination, and it feels great. You know, it's, it's liberating. Yeah, yeah. So uh, which location did you choose? Anywhere in the world, and you chose? Florida, of course, because why not? But um, yeah, I, I read the TSA uh, reports of uh, air travel are up the highest since pre-pandemic. Hotels are coming back. You know the the world uh, is emerging at least in the U.S. So it's it's very exciting, and maybe we'll even go to events again uh, sometime in the next few weeks and months. Imagine that. That'd be exciting. I know. I heard uh, Europe is starting to let vaccinated Americans back in, so the world is slowly becoming uh, more more back to norm ish. Uh, slowly but surely, <laughs> excited to to get there. Uh, and thank you all for for listening to our Data Movers podcast as we uh, crawl back to normalcy. Um, and talking podcast, Data Movers, I'm so excited about our guest today. Um, of course, at Data Movers, we sit down with the most influential men and women of today's leading telcos and data centers. We support the network infrastructure requirements of our modern world, we talk about that. We, uh, we get the best tips and, and uh, trending ideas. And so today we're really excited to have none other than Bruce Lehrman, co-founder and CEO of Involta. Great, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks Bruce. And I've been following you and Involta for years. So great to finally connect. And it looks like you're in Iowa. You grew up in Iowa, actually on a farm. I did. Well, that's, and so tell me, how has farming changed from when you grew up on a farm to today? How much technology is being embraced uh, on the farm. Yeah, it's it's amazing the difference between uh, when I grew up on a farm uh, many, many years ago to the technology being used today. Um, I still have family that that are in the farming community and, and farm a lot. And you know, the, the, the tractors today drive themselves across the field. So you know, back when I was there, you didn't have any of these curvy lines of me being distracted on the on a tractor or anything like that. It's all GPS controlled and uh, you know, all of the, the chemicals, they're, they're applying them with drones and things. It's just, it's unbelievable to see what's happening in, you know, kind of advanced uh, agriculture. Incredible to think of how that drone or that John Deere is, is now your latest edge device. And speaking of edge devices, you know, more and more organizations, not just farmers, are moving data towards the edge. So tell us about your team and, and how you help your customer empower that edge to to innovation yeah it's really interesting we started down the journey of exploring kind of what um, edge would be for our customer base and and for us the the primary verticals that we uh, focus on are healthcare manufacturing and financial services and um, the edge um, has has yet to emerge fully in a lot of these verticals um, but everybody's talking about it and everybody is thinking about what is the architecture required for uh, deploying edge? And, and your point is very um, important around agriculture and more rural areas. If you have manufacturing plants in rural areas, it's difficult to get network. And so if you think about having a smart uh, manufacturing environment, getting to that location, having an edge data center close to your manufacturing, it's gonna be very important. And so that's one. Healthcare is obviously working towards the edge. We're seeing the deployment of you know, the, the 5G networks and people gearing up for what that means in an edge strategy. And so kind of industry by industry and case by case, 
we're just seeing a lot of people talking about edge now and and just from an emergent standpoint you know all the analysts are predicting you know big growth numbers in edge i think the latest idc numbers was a quarter of a trillion dollars in the next few years in edge i mean we've talked to the the big iron manufacturers you know like hp and people like that they're re-architecting their entire um you know approach to being you know, focused on decentralizing IT again. And so, you know, we, we really believe that, um, that the edge strategy is really the next big wave of innovation in IT. And, and um, you know, we're positioned really well. We're in a lot of the markets that you would consider to be edge today. And it's why we believe that, you know, we're well positioned um, with edge and working with our clients to help them kind of build out their edge strategy. And no doubt about it. Uh, with the pandemic, everything has been accelerated. Enterprises are really uh, moving quickly in their transformation journey. Talk to us about Involta's innovation framework and how this has really helped enable transformation at any stage for, for enterprises. Yeah, so we um, have you know built on to you know a, a consulting framework that we've had for many years, but um, really enhanced it over the last few years because. There's so many organizations that are really um, trying to understand how to, you know, really transform their business. And IT leaders are wanting to be good partners with their with the business and how to drive sales and how to drive a better customer experience. And and a lot of times, you know, that technology, you know, organizations need help in terms of building out that that framework for how they're going to. You know, really be a partner in the business with that innovation. And so we have a series of uh, consulting uh, practices that help those organizations kind of, you know, you know, we meet them where they are today. And, and ultimately, our, our, our tagline is get there. And it's really about helping an organization from, from where they are today to getting to where they need to be uh, and position themselves for the future as that um, innovation is is moving quickly, and and uh, um, our customers know it, and they know that they need to be you know innovating more now than they've ever innovated before. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I love the sense of urgency. Uh, you know, IT complexity is at an, an all time high for most organizations. You think about healthcare with the pandemic and the shift to tele you know medicine and telehealth or even manufacturing and the disruption in supply chain. I mean, just amazing challenges and opportunities to transform from within. So how does Involta really help leadership tackle this really challenging environment? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So, um, you know, just, just from the basis of our company, our brand promise is really about superior infrastructure and services operational excellence and people who deliver. And that's really the, the core of how we deliver to the, to the marketplace. And, and when we think about the challenges that they've faced, and especially over the last year, you know, we've seen organizations, and I'll give you an, an example of a regional um, grocery store company and you know, super regional organization. They, they've gone from you know, less than 1% of their deliveries being, you know, uh, digital and, and or people ordering online to almost 10% or more some, some months, that, that means that they, um, they accelerated their plan for adoption by seven years. You know, they thought it would be seven years to get past that 10% mark. They did it in, you know, basically three or four months. And the same thing is happening in a lot of other industries where, um, it's really transformed how people think about what they can do. And even what we're doing here today with, you know, video, you know, um, meetings and, and that, I mean, there was so much reluctance to get on a, on a video meeting pre pandemic and turn your camera on like, Oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Somebody's going to see <laughs> my, uh, the, you know, my bedroom or whatever. But, but now, I mean, it's just commonplace and you see cats and dogs, you see little kids running around in the background. It's like, it's just become a whole new thing. But th those are just part of what you know is happening in the in the IT workplace now. Is it is really um, you know we talked about it earlier, but really moving at um, you know a breakneck speed at this point, meeting kind of the new expectations. Work from home is going to continue on. We're having employees all over the place. We have the five G deployment. 
you know, there's, there's going to be, you know, a number of new disruptors that, that we've never even heard of before that are going to create opportunities out of, out of this edge, out of this hybrid IT world. And, you know, organizations have to keep up with all the things that are going on. And so, you know, we, we again feel like we're a good partner to be able to bring, bring to light, you know, some of the best and breed people that we see making a difference in that world and helping them uh, get, get their adoption. And with all this need for bandwidth um, and broadband, um, hybrid cloud is really at the forefront of an organization's IT tool set. How can enterprises integrate hybrid solutions in a way that doesn't compromise their existing day-to-day -day operations? Yeah, it's, um, you know, for hybrid IT strategy, I mean, again, historically, everybody thought of deploying things in a way that would be good for three years or five years. And you know we're gonna we're gonna buy all this new hardware, and then we're gonna go deploy this stuff, and then we'll figure out what that next step is when this equipment runs out of juice. And and today's world, it's really about that that hybrid IT, whereby architecture and deployment is I I can move it at a moment's notice wherever it makes the most sense for me. If I if I build my systems around being easily moved from you know, a private cloud to a public cloud from Amazon to Microsoft to Involta um, to an edge player. If you start architecting your systems like that, you can start to have much less disruption and complexity as you go forward. And so that's really one of the things that, you know, we really um, work hard with our clients to make sure that they have um, the most flexible environment as they think about building out their you know, kind of this next hybrid IT architecture. And it's become, you know, such a big word that, you know, a few years ago, you know, as we went into enterprise organizations, they would say, well, everything is going to be in the public cloud. And, and that, that, you know, we had this cloud first sort of play. And now, you know, as we go into organizations, enterprises, it's really, they're talking about hybrid IT. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of different things that are going to come together. And again, it's really hard to be, as an enterprise, an expert in all of these areas. So I think, you know, again, it really um, help, helps them understand the value of having, you know, true partners in, in, in their strategy. Yeah, and speaking of expertise, the biggest challenge in technology today, in my opinion, is people. I mean, there just aren't enough people uh, who understand cloud, who understand security to, to help scale and, and manage this, this massive shift. You know, the hyperscalers and startups really snap up many of the good uh, technologists who are available. So I was reading here that Involta recently launched a cloud ops workshop series uh, to enable success. How is that gonna work? You know, the, uh, our, our cloud ops workshop, you know, again, is, is structured around starting with, um, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? And then how do we best help you architect um, that going forward? And to your point, Evan, it is very difficult for a lot of, you know, enterprise organizations to have uh, the ability to recruit the talent um, that can help them do that. So it's, you, know, you, you mentioned startups and, and uh, tech companies that are absorbing a lot of those people that can do that for them. You know, we're fortunate that we're also an organization that you know um, is attractive to the you know best of uh, breed talent, so that they they want to come work in an organization like ours because two thirds of our people are technical people doing this work, doing cutting edge work for lots of different clients. So you know they're not shoved down in the basement of some organization somewhere doing this work. You know they're they're out on the forefront working with some of the leading companies and doing some of the um, you know, le leading edge work for, for uh, uh, many, many different uh, companies. So for us, I think you know, we're able to leverage those people to help the enterprise organizations um, build out that strategy and, and build out you know, um, their security platform, which is another area that's really difficult to hire right now. And talking about people, our families, last year, 2020, total crazy mess with the pandemic. But also last year, we had a terrible, terrible, fast moving, powerful series of storms sweeping across Iowa and parts of the Midwest, where Involta is headquartered. So right. how did how did Involta come together to support businesses through this disaster recovery efforts and, and how to support, how did you guys support each other? 
Yeah. Yeah. It's um, I learned a new term last year and it's called the Rachel storm. And uh, it was a storm that uh, was about 75 miles high. If you're looking at the map of the United States and about 600 miles long and uh, it hit kind of the peak um, speed of the winds around the Cedar Rapids area. And that was, you know, more like a hurricane. It was um, 140 to 150 mile an hour sustained winds for 45 minutes. The city lost um, about two thirds of its tree canopy during that storm. And you can imagine the amount of poles that went down and all that, you know, in, in the Midwest, people plan for a tornado to take out a section of land, you know, a couple miles wide, maybe, and three or four miles long. Um, no one plans on a storm like this, uh, you know, power providers would lose, you know, 35 out of 36 sub substations, um, cell phone towers were down, all that. I mean, it was an amazing storm. Um, our, our facility continued to operate as planned. We were, you know, on generator power. We didn't have any power from our utility, but uh, we did uh, operate for, you know, nearly a week on generator power. Our customers were taken care of. We helped a lot of organizations during that time. You know, if they didn't have a good DR plan, you know, they were implementing DR plans on the fly. So, you know, talk about speed to service. I mean, it was, people were literally moving equipment, you know, in the middle of the night, um, getting it into our power network and, and all that. And, and our people kind of worked around the clock with clients uh, to do that. Meantime, a lot of our employees, you know, as they're helping our clients had trees down in their, uh, on their house, many houses were were hit with trees and and so um, we had a lot of our um, company came from our different offices Ohio and Minnesota and other places they brought generators they brought chainsaws they bought water they brought you know all kinds of capability and it was just really great to see the the level of effort that you know as everybody is working together to keep clients taken care of and new clients that need help um, you know we're, we're helping the employees and and uh, just to finish up with that story, we just um, recently uh, had a had a um, a day where we um, gave away up to five new trees for all of the employees and taught them how to plant them and and all that. So that was kind of the hopefully the end to the derecho story is that we're replanting uh, Cedar Rapids again. So, oh, that's that's a lovely story and. Yeah, it seems like these hundred year events, weather events are happening every year now. So it's really yeah. scary time. You know, my, my favorite new word of 2021 is resilience. So right. whether it's uh, when it comes to data centers or just your personal life and outlook, you, you know, resilience is the, the new key. Uh, so looking at your career, it's pretty interesting and it's great to see an entrepreneurship story that's not like Silicon Valley or New York all the time. Uh, tell me about how you, you started in Volta and grew the company, you know, to one of the, you know, forefront digital transformation firms in the country. Sure. Yeah, so I, you know, I really started to like the data center market when I was first exposed to it. I had a startup um, and we were doing streaming media technology back in the late 90s, back when, you know, probably shouldn't have been doing it, but, um, you know, because the technology wasn't quite there. But we, we uh, found the, the only place to put servers that we could get reliable internet to do live events um, was in um, Palo Alto, the first internet uh, data center in Palo Alto Internet Exchange. And back then you kind of had to know somebody that knew somebody to get a few servers racked up and, and have reliable internet. And, and so I tracked that um, industry for a long time and really found that I, I, I really did love the um, data center market. It's kind of like met a lot of the, you know, you know kind of industry kind of things that I would like to do. And I kept thinking about, I should start up a company like that someday. And lo and behold, um, a friend of mine called one day and said, hey, I have this data center that's been abandoned. I don't know what to do with it. Can you come over and take a look at it and see what I can do? And so we started talking and the next thing you know, we, we started the company and um, merged with a, another company and, and we were off to the races and starting to build new data centers and new markets. And, and uh, it's been a really fun ride ever since. That's great. Send us a picture of that data center. It's not quite the Google garage yet, but uh, know, right? almost as good. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I love it. And, you know, something that has been a theme throughout our whole conversation here is it's really how you're fostering a culture of innovation. Yeah. Uh, 
at Adam Belt, so with the people, um, again, planting those trees uh, to, to, to help recover. Um, can you tell us a little bit more and, and maybe words of advice you'd have to offer in how, how to culture innovation? Yeah, I think uh, um, I think it is fostered inside the DNA of our company, and I think we we um, you know really work hard to make sure that we are driving innovation for ourselves and our clients. Um, one of the things that I um, experienced was this thing called a startup weekend. And I don't know if you guys have experienced those before, but basically, you bring a, generally it's a bunch of um, younger um, people they get together on a weekend and they all pitch an idea and the best ideas get graded and then people say like I want to work on this team then they spend all weekend usually it's a software project but there can be other things as well and then they work all weekend to crank something out and build a you know an MVP and I'm like well how do we do that in, a, in an organization so we and uh, and uh, Anna Ilg our, our uh, CISO was really the one that drove um, that project, but, you know, we worked on, you know, how do we recreate that in, in this um, environment? So we did pull everybody together. We did some virtual pitches and then brought everybody together that was, that we're going to work on kind of three main themes. And, uh, you know, so we, we did that kind of right before the pandemic uh, hit and we're, we're going to, you know, kick it off again this year and, and uh, do that in person again, as people are getting vaccinated and stuff. So those projects, and, and again, during this pandemic, um, you know, people were continuing to work on how do we automate, how do we innovate within the organization. And, and honestly, during the pandemic, it was a great opportunity for us to make great progress on, you know, working in the business and not, you know, with, with customers all the time. So uh, really some great innovation came out of that. And I was really proud of the group that did it. And I think the other thing that we do from an innovation perspective is uh, I mentioned we have three verticals we've created advisory boards in each three of those verticals and so we, we we spend a lot of time with our their clients and non-clients but kind of industry leaders in those verticals and they help drive innovation for us and you know we we talk about what we've done you know based on the you know the last few meetings what you know the things that we've tried the things we've decided not to do and the things that we've implemented and we also talk about um you know where we Think we want to go going forward and get really good feedback and and they've told us before you know that's a really bad idea and, and we're like okay we get it so we'll stop to, we'll stop talking about that and we'll uh, go back to you know what we were thinking about before but anyway those are two areas that i think have really helped us internally you know drive a lot of innovation beyond just the you know sheer kind of innovation spirit that we have inside the organization Awesome. Well, I hope there are lots of beer and hot dogs at those uh, startup weekends. But, yeah, there, uh, there's, there's definitely <laughs> lots of food and beverage. I thought you were going to say that the sounds... advisory board meetings. Yeah. <laughs> right. That too. Yeah. So now's our rapid fire section where we okay. we, we uh, shoot a, a few uh, fun facts your way and try to embarrass you. But uh, so here we go. Uh, favorite sports team and why? Well, I have spent a lot of time down in the Tampa St. Pete area recently and uh, they are now referred to as Champa Bay. I don't know if you know that, but because the Tampa Bay won the uh, the Super Bowl and the the Rays were in the uh, World Series and the Lightning, our hockey team, won the Stanley Cup last year. So I've I've become a a, a sports fan of the Tampa Bay teams, but probably I'd have to say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at this point are the my favorite sports team. All right. Well, as a Boston Pats fan, I'll be rooting against you. <laughs> neither, right neither, well you can come down runner. anytime and and uh you know it's uh easy to get tickets down here compared to fenway <laughs> and your number one piece of ceo advice yeah so i think um uh, and we talked a little bit about it i think the culture of a company and the people are the most important part of um having a successful company i think it it really spills out into how how you deal with customers and making sure customers are first. So I think, you know, making sure that the people are right and the culture's right is the most important thing in, in, in growing and starting a company. And I think, you know, even in our advisory boards we were talking about earlier, you know, sometimes we get talking about the technology and, you know, what we're doing here and what we're doing with this and the strategy here. And, you know, we, we get brought back with our advisory board sometimes and say like, you know, really it's you know it's people are one of your your key um, strengths and you need to be 
you know, continue to focus on that as well. And, uh, you know, I think as a company, we, we do, but sometimes we forget to talk about it. Yeah, great point. Now, everyone knows CEOs work too much. What do you do to unwind, escape, relax, or, or otherwise? Yeah, I, I have a lot of hobbies, but I think probably the thing that helps me escape the best would be I try to get out cycling um, uh, as much as I can. And it's been um, probably the thing that's, you know, kept me in shape throughout this pandemic as, as best as I could. So uh, uh, there's been a lot of challenges to, to stay in shape during the pandemic. But I think cycling for me is, a, you know, an, an hour or more that I get a chance to just get out. So. It's a great, uh, it's a great sport for the pandemic. You know, you yeah. can still do it safely. So that's, that's a good one. Um, and where is your favorite place to travel? We hear from Evan, he's, he's down in Florida, first time out, uh, where would, where, where's yours? You know, I, I love traveling. Um, I travel a lot of, you know, from, uh, I love to explore new places. So I think my favorite place is probably the next place I'm going, but I, I don't know where that is for sure. I, uh, I have a couple of places on the list, but you know, definitely love, uh, you know, going to Europe and, and my son is based in Luxembourg now. So we're going to try to meet him somewhere that'll allow, you know, uh, some uh, vaccinated Americans to come in. And we're thinking maybe Croatia is next on the list. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, Croatia is beautiful, beautiful ocean. Luxembourg is amazing too. Yeah. You can tour the entire country in about a day. So I know perfect. that, right? Yeah. It's exactly. fantastic. So, and then what music do you guys play on your startup weekend blaring in the background? What, what kind of music? Do you well, play? it isn't always my my music that gets to be played <laughs> on startup weekend, but I do, um, you know, I, I I'm, uh, grew up with 80s music and I've, I've worked really hard to like not get trapped in time. So I think my uh, my XM station that I'm on the most is probably Alt Nation. Oh, Good yeah, one. I'm like 80s on 80s, like all the way, all the time. All right. People know they sit the car, they're, they're getting. Yeah, they're getting. I, I, I do bounce back from 80s and 90s sometimes. See, but. you know, Jamie's, Jamie likes to sing along. That, that's why she's yeah. on uh, the 80s. I like glaringly. So, and, and I'm not a singer. My, my, my husband's family is. Um, there's a, so, yeah. there, there's a Spotify <laughs> playlist that's. Uh, uh, songs to sing along in a car. So you might want to check that out. Well, Jamie, we so, need a data movers playlist with uh, every yeah. guest's favorite song. So yeah, there, there you go. Next, we'll, you can, like intro go with it, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Well, something for next time. <laughs> and um, and last but not least, uh, favorite Volta event. I feel like my event team might have written that question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that we do as we open up new data centers is we usually have a big grand opening event and it's really an opportunity. I, I mean, I'll put myself in a category of, you know, sometimes you get too um, in your head about the things that you need to accomplish, you know, the next day, the next week, the next year, and you don't stop sometimes and celebrate. And so for us, you know, when we open a new data center, um, it's really an opportunity for us to bring a lot of our employees together and stop and with our customers and prospective customers and really celebrate. And it's been really one of the most fun things that we do is uh, get that group together. And sometimes it does get a little out of control. We've been <laughs> known to take over the stage and howl at the moon and stuff like that. So <laughs> got me in. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Bruce. It was really great to see how you're, you're merging people and technology and innovation and culture into, you know, this unique entity called Involta. So, uh, congrats on all your success. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate the time today. Uh, we appreciate you. And guys out there listening, if you enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast, go ahead and check out more, jsa.net slash podcast for our upcoming Data Movers episodes, releasing every other week on Wednesday mornings, as well as other JSA podcast series. Great. And also follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell. And we're going to be doing Twitter Spaces soon, which is an audio version of, of Twitter and even Clubhouse. So more ways to find us and engage. Absolutely. And as always, everybody, stay safe and happy networking.